Hello, my YouTube friend, Pop Comics here, and in today's video, we're gonna go through my big mega epic Big Apple Con haul. I bought a lot of comics this year. Okay, right off of the bat, I went into the con and I went straight to a vendor that I bought from the last two times I was at the con. They had amazing Fiction House books that were in high grade for really good prices. So I thought, let me check to see if they had any scraps left over. And, uh, you know, I was going through the table. And then on the side, they had two boxes of Golden Age books. So I started looking through the one box and the guy said, oh, that box is worth about $5,000. I'm trying to wholesale it for a thousand. Now it was a bunch of cool, like Golden Age adventure comics, I guess you would call them. And I was like, oh, I'm interested. I mean, that's 80% off the price of mine. Now, I don't know if the price he had marked was a good price, but also I think it's stuff he's had for a few years. So maybe like online, the prices have gone up a little bit. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I knew I was interested because it looked like cool stuff. And I actually saw like four or five fiction house comics mixed in the box. So I thought I do want that. Then I started looking through the other box at a lot of, uh, it was all cartoon stuff. So the first bit I think was all like Looney Tunes stuff I like, but, but not stuff that I really would pay 10 or $15 for. But then I saw a big stack of Pogo comics, which I'm actively collecting right now. And then some other awesome, just like really golden age, not atomic age, but mid 40s stuff. So actual golden age stuff. So I was like, all right, you know what? I am interested too. So uh, I, he asked me if I'm interested in one of the boxes. I said, yes. And he's like, are you interested in both? I'm like, yes. Uh, he um, he threw in two more books that he had priced at $550. Again, like they're higher grade books and it's kind of with golden age stuff. It just like the higher it gets, the price really shoots to the roof, but they don't sell often. So it's kind of hard to evaluate. All right, so I have the numbers. One box, the box with the adventure stuff had 49 books and the box with the cartoony stuff had 75 books. So it was 125 bucks total with the two throw-ins. So I was like, all right, how about 1800 bucks? And uh, he said 1900. I was like, all right, done. So I bought them. I thought it was an amazing deal. You guys can let me know if you think it was an amazing deal. All right, let's go through this box of Golden Age adventure and crime books. Okay, here's the first handful. Uh, let me give you some numbers so we can kind of have fun with this. So I paid $950 a box. Uh, this box had 51 books in it, including the two more expensive ones. So I'm going to include that in this box, uh, which means I paid $18.62 a book. So you have to let me know if you think I paid a good price on these or not. They had the full value on these as $4,835 plus 550 for the two bonus books. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the price. You guys, I'm not going to look them all up, but if you guys want to look up a few just to see if you think I got a good price or not, I think I got an amazing deal on these. But we're going to go through them. So I'm going to just read off the condition and the price they have of each one. I like, uh, like I don't know. I don't know if they're pricing. like they're, I think they overgraded in some situations. Like They call this a fine, fine plus, but I see like a big chip there. Not quite sure if it hits a fine, fine plus, but it's close. Uh, so $35 is the price on that. Daredevil number 58. Really fun car. I just love all the details in the drawing. That's a great cover. Let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Okay. I want you to be able to see everything. Okay, now we have uh, Boy Comics number 35. A bit of a good girl cover. Uh, fun cover. That one they had as a very good, very good plus at 80 bucks. Okay. We have uh, Boy number 89. This one they priced at 70 bucks for a fine, very fine. Uh, it's an awesome amusement park cover. And they have this guy, the Return of the Claw, and he has like a trap jaw face. I thought that cover was awesome. That one's really cool. That one, like 18 bucks and that feels like a steal. Uh, let's see. Guilty number 19 has Simon and Kirby art in it, which is cool. Uh, 1950. That's cool. The older, the better. Uh, they call this one a fine for $75. That feels like actually... Kind of an accurate price on this one. These crime ones usually have a bit more value. Uh, let's see what this one is. This is... Uh, I'm not sure. Stories by Famous Authors Illustrated. Number one for 50 bucks for a good, very good. Not 100% sure uh, what this is. But that's fun. Uh, the Durango Kid, number 10. A fine, very fine plus at 70. I love the colors and the design on that one. We have Fast Fiction number five. I guess another famous author's illustrated. This one was a fine at 85. So this is the price they had. Basically the price I paid was 80% off. So if it was 85, I probably paid like 16. If it's 50, I paid 10. If it's 70, I paid 14 basically. But overall per book average, 1862. So <laughs> I think I'm doing really good actually. 
I, I actually got one of these for free at New York Comic Con two years ago, I believe, or two cons ago. But this is a free promo that they would give away in serial. Uh, they call it Near Mint High Grade Dick Tracy number one promo comic. It's super cool, though. Uh, Hot Rod Comics number five. This was a very good find. They had price at 70 I do kind of like the Hot Rod Comics because I always like seeing all the fun cars that they have on these things. And uh, Ken Stort number one. This is 1948. It's a find that they had priced at 80 A really fun pirate treasure cover. So yeah, so far, these are cool, and the prices are pretty high that they had priced. So even if these were, like, double what they should have been, I'm still getting them for, like, half off. So I think I got a good price on these. All right, let's get the next batch. Okay, this one has an awesome cover. I love this cover a lot. We have uh, Wanted. I don't see the number. I'm not 100% sure, but it's an awesome bluish color, and, she, like, I like her yellow color. Really cool cover. They had a good, very good at 50 bucks. Awesome. Oh, I gotta scooch these over. Okay. Uh, Terry and the Pirates, number six. Very good at 45. It's a fun cover. I like the way it's printed. Uh, Terry and the Pirates, number eight. That one was a fine, very fine plus at 70. Uh, Terry and the Pirates, or Dell 4 Color, number 101. Fine, fine plus at 60. I do want to work on a full set of 4 Color eventually, so I'm slowly buying them over the years. Target Comics, let's see, Volume 8, number 3, 1947. Really awesome action pack cover. You got the elephant, and they're like chasing after the dudes in the car. You have a little bit of a carnival theme in the background. I do like carnival-themed covers, so this is super cool. Uh, they have this fine at 45 bucks. Uh, okay, and then the first Fiction House. This is the main thing that kind of put me over the top. Like, I definitely want these because I want to collect all the Fiction House comics. So, we have it's not the good girl art ones, but still beautifully colored and illustrated. So, we have Longbow Indian Boy number eight, a fine, fine plus for 50 bucks. That's awesome. I love the colors on that one. And then Longbow Indian Boy number nine. A uh, fine, very fine for $70. These are nice or mid to high grade copies. Uh, okay, we have some more crime drama ones. We have Justice number 42. A uh, fine at 60 bucks. Uh, nice higher grade Joe Palooka. Very fine at 85 for number 12. I do want to put a full run of Joe Palooka. I have probably about a third of the run, but I'm not sure if I had that one. So that's really cool. Uh, let's see. This looks like a Dell four color 443 or. Ben Bowie, Mountain Men, number one. It says it's a very fine near mint for 150 but there's a slight scuff on the back. That's a cool comic, though. I like getting all the cool devil four color stuff. Foremost, number four. A very good, very good plus at 175 Looks like a fun action-adventure comic. I kind of like the old-school action. You know, the kids are getting in trouble and whatnot. That's a cool cover. I like that one a lot. Uh, Crime Detective, volume two, number one. Fine plus, very fine for a hundred. It does look like it's in pretty decent shape. Nice cover, very cool cover. I do like these crime covers. Um, and the cool thing, like this kind of stuff, is kind of a little bit more affordable to collect. If you want to get into Golden Age, these are a lot of fun covers. But like the sci-fi horror stuff, it gets so expensive. This stuff is relatively affordable. Uh, crime does not pay. Number fifty-six, really awesome cover, action pack. They're in the pool hall. That they had a fine, very fine, or a fine plus, very fine for 150. Yeah, all these from the 40s are super cool too. Like this one's earlier 40s, 1942, middle of the war. That's cool. I bet a lot of those don't exist anymore. Uh, and then we have Daredevil number 58, a really awesome sports cover. I like just all the details and everything. The coloring is fantastic. Uh, this one they said very fine for 150 and it does look like it's in pretty decent shape. I see a few spine ticks, but I don't see any major wear or damage on it. Okay, that sack was really cool. I feel like I got a lot of value in that handful. Next handful, we got some more uh, Daredevil, which I would like to put this set together because I really like the cover. It's just I guess it's Charles Bureau. He just puts a lot of detail into it. Uh, the main character looks cool. So this was, uh, let's see, what is it? Number 48. They had it at a fine at 125, but it does have a partially split spine. Love this cover, though. She looks really cute. I love the details in her hair. I like all the layout of the whole cover. 
That's a really nice cover. And I, this is a set I kind of want to work on too because it's a, like semi-affordable and it has a lot of really cool covers. Uh, let's see. This is Daredevil number 50. A fine plus. Very fine for 150. Again, just a very detailed like just the line work just looks very fine and delicate. I like it. I think it's cool. Uh, let's see. Guilty number 21. It says it's Simon and Kirby art. A fine, very fine for a hundred bucks. This is cool. All these really cool crime thriller type comics. These are amazing. I don't think this is stuff you could normally find in decent mid to high grade for like $18. That was a, it feels like a steal. Uh, this cover is super cool. It's like a painted crime action cover. It's a Soviet era, so Cold War action going on here. It's uh, Little Owl of the FBI, number 10. They called it a very good, very good plus for 100 bucks. It says first book in title. So there must have been something else. They must have switched over to this from something else. That's super cool looking though. I love painting covers. Okay, then we have these uh, Mighty Midget covers. I guess it's inappropriate to call them that now, but that's what they were called back then. Um, what is this? This is Lance O'Casey. Uh, let's see, number 12, 1943. So in the middle of the war, uh, near Mint 125. That's cool. And then we have, uh, this also says number 12 but of Minuteman near Mint for 125. I don't know if they repeated the number or each one had like a little mini number on it. Uh, this also says number 12. It's Baldo, the boy magician near Mint for 125. Yeah, those are cool. Uh, Mysterious of Unexplored Worlds, number 19. Very fine, very fine plus for 200 with Steve Ditko art. That's a really cool looking cover. And I just, I like the colors and the design and the layout. Everything about it is really neat. I really like that cover. And then we have a Out of This World, number nine, with Steve Ditko art again. I don't think he did the cover. He probably just did the interiors. A fine, fine plus for 100 bucks. Yeah, so that whole stack was pretty amazing. Okay, next stack we have, we have uh, Poplar Comics, uh, number 99, Gangbusters, Looks in really nice shape. It's a fine, very fine. They had priced out at 100 bucks. That's a cool cover. I like that cover a lot. Uh, I think this is a Dell 4 Color 236. A fine plus, very fine for 100. That looks cool. Uh, another Dell 4 Color, I believe, number 255. Very fine for 125. A fun painted cover. Not like the biggest cowboy fan, but I do love a great painted cover. I think this is Dell 4 Color as well, 314. Very fine, very fine plus for 125. Move that over a little bit. Uh, Buccaneers, number 25. A little bit of a, a good girl art cover. Fine plus for 200. Pretty cool cover. I like that cover a lot. Uh, Wild West, number two. This has the fun, like, timely look where it just the block letters, the red behind it. There's a lot of different titles, romance titles, Western titles, war titles that have that same kind of lettering. And I like that era. I want to collect a lot more of these. Uh, this one says it's fine plus very fine, but it does have a tear on the or a back chip. $150. Uh, cool cover, though. I really like that one. That's something like I normally wouldn't go out of my way, but for a great deal, I'd buy it all day long. Uh, Buccaneers, number 23. Good girl pirate cover. Uh, let's see. Very good fine for $150. That is super cool. Okay. I like that. I think there's a lot of awesome comics in that stack. Okay, and then last handful from that box, we have uh, Buccaneers. Uh, I'm not sure the number on it, but it's a good boy cover. <laughs> it's two pirates on the treasure chest, half naked. Uh, fine, fine plus for 200 bucks. Uh, oh, this one is cool. I think this is LB Cole. They have his as labeled as LB Cole, and it kind of looks like his work, so I think it's a, one of his covers. Uh, lower grade, just a good plus to very good for 30 bucks. But... I thought that was super cool. I don't have any blue bowl issues yet, so I'm really happy to get that. Uh, Boy Comics, number 22. I really like this diving cover. I guess it's this bureau. I really like the covers that this guy drew. They're kind of like rolling on me. It does look like it's been restapled, so it is possibly restored in that sense. Uh, they called it a fine for 140 but I feel like it's a fine, but with the restoration. Uh, still a really cool cover, though. Uh, Zorro, number 12, very fine near mint for 100. Uh, oh, this one is super cool. So we have Wings, number 111, very fine for 150. I'm actually really happy to get this because I do love the, just 
Fiction House, the coloring and everything about their covers is amazing. It is a good girl cover. She's a little, she's small though. But the overall design of the cover and the action and just the colors and everything, very beautiful cover and in really good shape too. So that's amazing. It says last, so I don't know if it's the last of that person, Jane Martin, or it's the last in the series. Not 100% sure on that. We have Nayoko, the Jungle Girl, number 20, and Fine Plus Very Fine for 100 bucks. That's super cool. What I like about it is a lot of these are in decent shape. There wasn't any, like, really low-grade ones. The lowest, there was a couple good, very good. But for the most part, they're all, like, mid-grade or better. You know, very good, fine, and better. Uh, Conga, number 19. So we have one Silver Age book here. But they had 60 bucks on that. Uh, oh, this is cool. Kanga number seven. It's called very good. It does say it has a repair, so it is restored. And I think it's it looks like there's a, like a rip right there that they might have uh, glued or something. So one restored. It's still a cool fiction house issue though. And then we have Super Comics number one twenty one. Very fine at seventy five. Awesome cover. And it says it's the last issue in the series, so that's cool. I think last issues are usually a little bit rarer. And then we have uh, Conga number 11. This one says there is, it's a fine, but with a slight repair, $80. But yeah, that's cool. I'm really happy that there was, even though they're not mint, they look nice, right? They, they are a little bit damaged, but they look nice. And so I'm really happy with the Fiction House stuff. All right, let me show you the two extra ones they threw in. So these are the two bonus books, which I tried to look up. Uh, it's so hard because these are higher grade and they just do not sell often. So we have a Mutton Jeff number 27. It's a very fine plus the near mint for 200. Ah, that might be correct price. Is it a very fine plus near mint? There is a couple stains there. And it looks like a little bit of stains there. But overall, it looks in really nice condition. So it is a high grade copy. Question is, is it worth 200? I don't know. It's worth more than the $18 I paid though. That's for sure. And then we have a Marge's Little Lulu number seven. So a really low number in high grade. They call it a very fine near mint, $350. It's the first appearance of Fanny, I think. It's the first appearance of one of her characters. And it's an Xmas cover. Uh, I did see the Promise Collection one sold for... What should that sell for? The Promise Collection one sold for $312 last June in a 9.0. This could be that condition or better, but it isn't a pedigree. So the question is, is it going to sell for $300? I'm not 100% sure. But again, I paid $18.60 per comic. So I think that's a pretty decent price on that. So what do you guys think? Do you think I paid a good price on all the comics in that box? I think so. Let's go through this box of Golden Age cartoon books. Okay, first stack on this box. So this was the all cartoon box. And I, you guys know I kind of love this stuff because it's affordable. And it's my childhood it's things I enjoy. I mean, it's way before my time, but, you know, I watched the reruns as a kid. So this box had 75 books. I paid $12.67 a book. So you guys can look some stuff up. I'm not going to look up stuff as I go through it. But you can tell me if you think I got a good deal or not. So we have Dell Four Color 206, I think, or Looney Tunes 206. Not 100% sure. I don't know if Looney Tunes had a big, long run. It might have. But they had very fine at 75. Now, again, I don't know condition... This looks a little bit less than a very fine. So I don't know. Normally I would try to buy something like this for 10 bucks. So I, I pretty much paid what I would want to pay on something like this. But these aren't the kind of things I'm normally going after. At least not unless I get a really good deal. Uh, let's see. Number 136 on Looney Tunes. This one was a fine plus very fine for 45. Beautiful red cover though. I like that. Okay. I got to make a little bit of room so we can see what's going on here. Okay, uh, Looney Tunes 152, a fine for 25. Uh, number 169, very fine for 85. That one looks pretty nice. Number 96, so we're going back to 40s. Now that's super cool. The older ones, those are the ones that are super exciting to me. A fine plus, very fine for 75. Uh, number 101, a fine plus, but with a subscription increase for 40. Uh, well, the rest of it looks pretty good, so maybe it's a fine plus. Uh, let's see, uh, number 122, fine plus, very fine for 50. Number 55, very good fine, but it's an earlier issue from the mid 40s for 30. That's super cool because those are the ones that are going to be harder to find in any kind of grade. Uh, number 86, late 40s, still in the 40s, though. I love getting the issues from the 40s. 
Uh, fine plus, very fine for 80. That's super cool. Okay, let me get the next deck. But uh, as we go through the Looney Tunes, I think these were the weakest issues. So I wasn't really buying the box for these. These were just kind of like bonus books. Uh, okay, let's see. We got Looney Tunes number 35. So a lower number. Very good for 45. 1944. Honestly, these ones from the mid 40s are pretty cool. Because this isn't kind of stuff you find too easily. It's usually the later 50s that I find cheap. This stuff I don't find cheap that often. Uh, number 46. Very good, very good. Plus for 40. 1945. Uh, okay, now we're getting into Mutt and Jeff. I do like the collect the Mutt and Jeff stuff. I think it's just fun. Uh, number 60. Very good for 40. Nancy and Sluggo, number 67 for 60. I do like collecting Nancy and Sluggo. Okay, Pogo Possum. Now, that is a series that I'm actively working on. I bought number one last year. I would like to fill it in the set. So the fact that they had like a whole big handful of these is one of the main reasons why I decided to jump on these. Uh, so we have number 11 in a fine, fine plus for 60. Uh, another Mutt and Jeff, number 32 from 1948. Awesome uh, Christmas cover. Decent shape, fine plus, very fine for 85. That one's actually pretty awesome. Uh, Mutt and Jeff, number 40. This is a fine, very fine cover crease, 80 bucks. Oh, yeah, it has that corner right here is creased. But other than that, it's a pretty decent shape. Uh, Mutt and Jeff, number 55, fine, fine plus for 60. So, actually, Mutt and Jeff, I kind of like too. So, I'm happy to get a bunch of these. I don't really have, I think I have only three in my collection. So, it's nice to get a few more to add to the stack. Uh, okay, Pogo number five. So a lower number. Very good to find for 60. I mean, it's a lower grade, but it's still not terrible. That's pretty awesome. Okay, let me get the next stack. Okay, next stack. We have a low number of Mutt and Jeff. Number 13, 1944. Very good find for 70. The earlier they are, the better. Because you just cannot find stuff like that cheap. Uh, Mutt and Jeff number 25 from 1946. A fine, fine plus for 65. Really fun cover. I love the tank theme. Uh, a couple more Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes number 170. Very fine for 75. I guess he's got mixed up a little bit. Uh, Looney Tunes number 193. Very fine. Very fine plus for 90. I mean, it is nice to get them in kind of highest grade. Uh, Delphor Color 326. Fine, very fine for 50. I do like the Andy Panda stuff. Uh, New Funnies, number 168. Very fine, very fine. Plus 120. Really fun cover. Love that one. Uh, Delphor Collar, number 260. Fine plus, very fine for 85. We have, I think that's also Delphor Collar, 351. A fine for 30. I do like the Delphor Collars. Uh, let's see, Porky Pig, number 42, fine plus, very fine for 35. Uh, more Pogo Possum, and this one it looks in pretty decent shape. But number 13, a fine plus, very fine for 75. Really happy with that. Uh, number 14, fine, fine plus for 60. That's awesome, like in the lower numbers. Uh, number 7, very good to fine for 60. So a little bit of a lower number. Okay, that stack was awesome. Let me get the next stack. I really am happy with all these Pogo Possums, though. I've been wanting to work on that set. So I just knocked out a good chunk of it. And we're still going. So we have Pogo Possum number 12. Very good find for 60. It's like it's got chipping, but overall the image looks really nice. We have Pogo Possum number 9. Very good find for 60. Uh, number 10 fine for 60. Oh, let me move this over just a little bit. We got number 8. Very good, very good. Plus for 50. Number 4. So a lower number. Uh, very good, very good. Plus for 50. Number 15 fine for 60. Yeah, this there's a lot in the series. Uh, Boy's Life number 4. So it looks like a Boy Scout magazine or something. Very high grade on this one. The white is really popping on it. Uh, very fine. Very fine plus for 70. And, oh, I love this stuff. The oddball mid-40s cartoony stuff is fun for me. The Captain and the Kids number... I guess it's just a special issue. Summer special from 1948. That's awesome. Very good, very good plus for 50. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay, let me get the next stack. All right. We have Ace Comics, number 126. 
Really fun cover. Uh, very good find for 50. I uh, really like this one. We have Dog Patch Comics, number 71. Al Caps, little Abner. Really cute, like, good girl art. The graphics are just colorful. I like the red. Very strong red on that. That is awesome. Uh, this one's super cool, too. I'm actively collecting Atomic Mouse. So I'm happy to get that as well. Number 32. Very good to find for 25. Uh, Woody Woodpecker. or I think it's a Dell 4 Color 202. Fine, fine plus for 50. Another 4 Color, I believe, Woody Woodpecker. Number 249. Fine, very fine for 75. Uh, this one is cool. We have Ace Comics. Uh, number 71. Just a really beautiful older comic book 1943 so it's during the war so it's lucky it survives there's probably not a ton of these out there uh very good for 40 it does say the center fold is detached uh tip top comics 156 very fine for 70 that is super cool uh tip top comics 172 very fine very fine plus for 75 uh tip top comics number 179 fine very fine for 50 this is another series I'm kind of collecting, mostly because I want to get the Peanuts issues, so I end up buying lots trying to get it. <laughs> I think I got the second or third appearance of Peanuts at one point for like five bucks, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, New Funnies, number 159, 100 bucks for a very fine, pretty high grade on that. Uh, New Funnies, number 160, another 100 bucks for a very fine, that's cool. Okay, let me move that stack. All right, this one I'm super disappointed in. Not, uh, I saw it in the box. I didn't read the notes. I, you know, I just flipped through it quickly. But the cover, Terry Toons number 46, it's an amazing, beautiful Mighty Mouse cover. And it looks in great shape, but it's missing the back cover. So no back cover for 50 bucks. But the front cover looks awesome. Like the quality of the cover looks super good. I'm just sad that it's missing the back cover. But I love that. For now, I can enjoy the front cover though. <laughs> Uh, Porky Pig number 44, fine, fine plus for 25. Looks in decent shape. Uh, Howdy Doody, four color, 811, fine plus, very fine for 70. Uh, oh, I love the cover on this one. It's like a fun racing cover, just the artwork is gorgeous. Uh, let's see, a good, very good for 75. So it's lower grade, mostly because that corner is all chipped out, but the rest of the image looks really good. So I'm happy with that. Uh, Howdy Doody Comics number 16. Uh, they're fun painted covers, but who... I mean, I don't know if anyone cares about Howdy Doody. But for, as comics and artifacts, I think they're kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Number one, it says, with a question mark. Fine. Very fine for 70. Uh, number 11. Fine plus very fine for 40. But the centerfold is detached. Oh, this is... The, now, this is super cool because I am actively collecting Fox and Crow as well. So, we have number 12. So, a low number in high grade. Very fine. 140. That one I'm actually really happy to get. Uh, Fritz Ritz, number 58. Very good, very good. Plus for 50. Fun, goofy, good girl art cover. Uh, Howdy Doody, number 14. Fine for 50. Okay, that stack was pretty cool. Especially the Fox and Crow issue. I do like these uh, little Abner covers. I think the artwork is just a ton of fun. So we have... Comics on Parade number 51 from 1945. A very fine plus the near mint for 150. So high grade right at the end of the war. That's uh that's pretty cool. I'm surprised that like it exists. You know, it's that kind of thing where in a really nice grade for that old. Uh let's see. Comics on Parade number 52 with the Captain and the Kids. A fine, fine plus for 70. That's an awesome cover. I love that one. Uh, we got one Silver Age one here. We have the Dennis the Menace bonus special number one. It says Near Mint for 100. It has some spine creasing there, though. So I don't know if it's a Near Mint. It might be a very fine, even very fine minus. Because I've seen, with the thick books, I've seen ones that look really nice, but the spine has the creasing, and it kind of drops the grade. Uh, let's see, Blondie number 29. That's super cool. Fine, fine plus for 50. I do have probably about five issues from this run, so it's fun to get another one to fill it in a little bit. Uh, and then there's like a little stack of higher grade or mid high grade little Lulus, which is fun. A uh, little Lulu number 37, fine, fine plus for 75. Uh, oh, Marvin Mouse number one. So it's a fun number one issue from 1957. It says Stanley, so he must have written something in the storyline. Let's see, very good fine for 60. That's pretty cool. I do like these anthropomorphic animal 
Cartoonomics. Uh, Mighty Mouse number 73. Fine plus, very fine for 70. Awesome cover. I do want to collect more Mighty Mouse, so I'm actually really happy with that. All right, back to the lose number 76. Very fine near mint, 125. That's pretty cool. Uh, number 78, fine, very fine for 60. Uh, fine plus the very fine, number 43 for 75. And we have the Cats and Jammer Kids, number 41, during the war, 1944. So it does have sort of like an airplane war theme. Uh, it says very good fine with a loose cover for 80. So it's probably a little bit lower grade than that. But still very cool comic book. Anything from, you know, World War II and earlier, just hard to get because they destroyed most of those. They recycled most of them back then. Okay, next stack. Okay, final stack in this box. Okay, so we have the Cats and Jammer Kids, number 44, again, during the war. Very good for 70. It says it has a loose centerfold. Really fun, kind of like painted look. That's a cool cover. I like that one. Oh, and the little Abner ones. I always see these. I think they're just a ton of fun. Uh, so we got number 93, fine, very fine for 100. Good girl art cover. That one's fun. We got uh, Jigs and Maggie, number 22, fine plus, very fine for 90. Uh, oh, I really like the cover on this one, too. I just really like just the fine details in the drawing. So we have Jingle Jangle Comics, number 20, fine, very fine for 65. And then uh, number 24 from the Jingle Jangle Comics. This is very fine for 85. That's also a beautiful cover. Uh, Howdy Doody, number five. Very good, very good plus for 70. So yeah, that's everything in the cartoon box. Do you guys think I got a good deal? I think at $12 on average, there's a lot of stuff like this that even at half price is probably like 40 bucks is probably a really good price on this. So, so it's like I bought one of these at a fair value and I got three of the Looney Tunes ones for free, kind of. Yeah, I think that works for me. I would love to buy Golden Age boxes like this at least like once a month because this was a lot of fun let's go through this bag of comics i paid 20 bucks for okay so these are the first four books i bought out of that five dollar box i saw uh we have monsters on the prowl number nine it looked like a decent higher grade copy so for five bucks i was like yeah i'll grab that i mean it's got somewhere but it's a fine plus probably very fine minus maybe it does have a little bit of ink right there but other than that it looks really nice and then my friend sean had found these i don't know if he were he was picking them out for me or uh, he just wanted to see if they had value. But Tencent Archies for five bucks, heck yeah. No, you know, it's got some chips on the spine. It's probably just a very good minus condition. But it's complete, it looks like. It doesn't look like it's missing anything major. And for five dollars, I had to get that. And it was cool. He's like, yeah, Sean, you buy them. He gave them to me. <laughs> he said, those are for you to buy. So I was happy to get those. And then we have Laugh 160, another Tencent Archie. Absolutely love the Tencent Archies. They're some of my favorite comics to collect. Five bucks for that felt like a steal. And then I got uh, uh, Freddy. I don't know the number. I got to look inside. Uh, number nine. Oh, volume two, number 19. A really cute, good girl cover. Uh, I hadn't seen this cover before. Charlton comic. I was. I think it's Charlton, right? Is it Charlton? Yeah, Charlton comics from a year. 1959. So a nice 10 cent 1959 comic in not terrible condition. Maybe like a very good minus again. $5 though. I had to grab that. I'll grab any 10 cent issue that looks halfway decent for five bucks. So yeah, that was a really cool little stack of stuff. All right, this stack of comics, I think it's 42 comics. And uh, they were $5 a comic book, but he gave me $25 off the total price. So that's uh, 210 180 I think he said. So 180 That's uh, maybe 450 440 a comic, something like that. All right, let's go through this deck. Okay, so this one vendor was having $5 book, or everything was 5 bucks on their table. So I got a lot of fun stuff for 5 bucks. He had a whole bunch of Ninja Turtle books, original run. Uh, not like the lowest numbers, but in pretty decent shape. Number 41. So $5. Good price on that. Uh, this one's a lower number. This one's a little bit worn. But number 36 for 5 bucks. Yeah, why not? Uh, number 40 for 5 bucks. Again, these are a little bit worn. They're not near mint, but they're not terrible. Uh, number 38 for 5 bucks. And then I grabbed all the uh, Bronze Age Fantastic Fours they had, the earlier numbers. Because $5 on that felt like a great price. $111 for $5. Uh, Teen Titans, number 36 for $5. I love the Teen Titans run, so I'll grab any for $5 anytime I see them. 
Uh, Fantastic Four 105, $5. Again, it feels like a steal. It's not mint. It's probably like a very good, very good minus maybe, but still $5 is a good price on that. Uh, number 109, that one actually looks in a little bit better shape. $5 was a steal. Uh, Wonder Woman 198, this one also looked in decent shape. $5 is a steal on that. Uh, Uncanny Tales number one, you know, a number one Bronze Age horror book for five bucks. Yeah, any day. And then I grabbed a whole bunch of Submariner. I've been kind of wanting to put this run together. Uh, they all look like mid to higher grade. So five dollars felt like a decent price on these. So number 68, number 65. My friend Sean wanted number 50. I let him take it because he let me grab a couple books I wanted. Uh, and I, I think I had 50 already. Number 64, number 63. Uh, number 61. These are really awesome covers, though. Number 58. I do need to put them in new bags and boards, though. These are kind of floppy. That's I love the colors and the details on that one. And, the, like, just looking at these a little bit closer, I love the covers on this series. I just think they have beautiful covers. Number 57. All these really fun underwater covers. Uh, number 56. Number 55. Amazing cover. Number 54. And number 53. Okay, let me clear those out. We got more Submariner with these beautiful, beautiful covers. Uh, someone's going to tell me who drew them. I want to say Everett. I'm drawing a blank on my head. <laughs> but the covers are gorgeous. Uh, number 51. Number 47. Cool Doctor Doom cover. Uh, number 46. Number 45. Number 38. Man, that cover is gorgeous. Oh, there's tape. I think it's on the bag. Okay. It actually looks in decent shape. Like, the whites are pretty bright. Uh, number 37. Number... F oh, did I oh, I didn't know I grabbed a number 50. I guess they had more than 150 in there. Number 50. Uh, Ninja Turtles. Number 36. I must have grabbed a couple of these by mistake. But that's okay. These are awesome books. I know I could probably get more than $5 on them. Uh, the Mini Graves of Dr. Graves, number 46. That's cool. It has a UK price, so I think that's a UK variant. Uh, World's Unknown, number four. That's an awesome cover, and I didn't have that one yet. So for $5, I'll grab any... As long as it's in pretty decent shape, like at least maybe a very fine minus, I'll grab any Bronze Age horror I don't think I have. Uh, Summer under 72, 71... 58 oh okay so i did grab a few duplicates uh 43 i could have swore i went through and i pulled out all the duplications <laughs> but you know what that's okay because five dollars are steal on these uh 41 uh number 17 the lower numbers are really good uh more fantastic four number 102 another fun uh submariner cover uh, number 70, oh, and number 36. Okay, I did not realize I grabbed duplicates. I thought I had gone through the stack and pulled out the duplicates, but I must have grabbed a few by mistake. But yeah, those are awesome. Very cool stuff. All right, let's go through this awesome stack of comics I paid $137 for. Okay, so this vendor had all the stuff 50% uh, off, and they had some amazing books. I probably would have spent a lot more with them if I hadn't bought those two boxes at the beginning of the show. I would have dug some more, but I found a good handful of things I wanted. So we have Why the Last Man number two. I'm still looking for a three, four, and five to complete my run. But super thrilled to find number two. I've been looking for years. So just finding it for $7.50 was good. And I think they took another like 10% off. So it's probably like $6.50 ish, something like that. Uh the Witching Hour number 10. Uh during the video where I streamed, someone said it is Neil Adams. I think think it's a nick cardi like the two of the nick cardi and neil adams both did covers and it's always a little bit confusing because the style that they're using is similar but looks more like nick cardi drawing to me it could be neil adams though not 100 sure what i do know is that the whites are very white and the blacks are dark there's just one little mark right there but 15 dollars like this for probably a very fine very fine plus copy felt like a really good price on that love the cover too it's gorgeous uh, and then I end up buying a whole stack of these adventure comics, the Supergirl ones, because they look like they're all in decent, like very fine condition for five bucks. And just the colors were popping. The whites were white. The darks were dark. I didn't see any major damage, maybe some light wear on the spine. But like you just don't find early Bronze Age stuff like this or late Silver Age stuff in this kind of condition for five bucks. So I was happy to pick these up, especially the Supergirl issues. 
So we have 396. We have 385. Again, like, I don't see any hits. There's, like, a little bit of spine wear, but, like, you know, usually you find these, they're a lot rattier and they're a lot more yellow. So these are kind of amazing. Number 395. I also like these kind of horror-themed covers or, like, the sci-fi-themed covers. These are awesome. Five bucks for that felt like a steal. Uh, 390, the thick one. This one was ten dollars, but ten dollars also felt like a decent price because it's in decent condition. I probably have a lot of these, but this is definitely an upgrade for me condition wise. Uh, 391. I just realized the staples popped, so a little bit lower condition, but overall it looks like a very clean copy. So that's awesome. Uh, 393, beautiful cover, five bucks. Yeah. Uh, 387 again in decent shape, like a little bit of wear along the top there, but overall just a beautiful copy for five bucks. Uh, I love this one. It's got like a kind of horror theme to it. Uh, oh, I do see, when I looked at it, I was filming, I didn't really see that there is a little bit of a crease line right there. Other than that, though, it looks in really nice shape. You know, the darks are dark, the whites are white. I didn't notice that, but I paid $4, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, I think this is the first one I grabbed just because of how strikingly white the Action Comics looked and how black the black looked without wear. So for $5, I grabbed Action Comics 413. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I got to grab the Supergirl ones. <laughs> okay, next deck. Okay, now, honestly, I probably would have grabbed a lot more of the Superman titles at five bucks just because they looked in nice shape. I need to log in everything I have into an app just so I can better track of this stuff. But I also I was running out of cash and running out of the ability to carry it. <laughs> so we have 374 was $3. I just realized the staples popped as well. But overall, it looks in decent shape. I don't mind the occasional pop staple if overall it's kind of minty for a Silver Age book and it's cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap is great. Uh, Venture 371, that's a fun cover. Uh, 376, just the colors really, like the purples, everything really popped on this cover for me. So $4 for that. Uh, 383, beautiful cover. This one's slightly more yellowed, but still overall, it looks in pretty decent shape for 5 bucks. Uh, 377, again, the blacks look pretty black. A little bit of wear on the spine, but for $5, I was happy with that. Uh, Action Comics 332. This one is a little bit more worn. I'm actually not sure why I grabbed this one. I also have some pencil on it. And I paid $10 for it. <laughs> All right. I didn't look very carefully at that one. That was maybe a mistake on that one. Uh, Adventure Comics 368. That one actually looks really nice, though. Awesome cover. I love it. Uh, 386. Awesome cover as well. Five bucks. Good shape on that. Uh, 388 that cover looks really nice as well that's uh who's that computer guy i don't know five dollars though steel uh venture 389 another awesome cover in great shape for five bucks uh 384 for five bucks i love the super girl issues when she started her own storyline i just love this run that's a run that like i'm happy to upgrade the condition on them i gotta look through i might have some better shape on a couple of them but I just grabbed every one they had because they just look so nice. Uh, three ninety two, it's gorgeous. Oh, and then after I bought all those, I bought this one for seven bucks. Just a really fun sorcery number eleven. There's, uh, you know, the ten or so issues of sorcery. They're just really cool covers. I love the artwork. So yeah, that was amazing. And finally, I got four more books. I paid two hundred five dollars for. All right, let's go through them. Okay, and then these are the last few things I bought at the con. So I've been wanting to put this set together. I think there's like 20 or 30 of the War That Time Forgot issues of the Star Spangled War Stories. They're all really fun dinosaur versus military covers. So number 132. These are $10 a piece. They're probably mid-grades fines maybe. And so that was a really good price actually on that. $10 for that was a great price. And then number 134. Again, awesome cover. I love these so much. So I paid 10 each for those. Uh, this issue I paid 60 bucks for. It's a 1 in 100 Peach Momoko design variant. I love collecting all the Peach Momoko I don't have. And that's kind of a rare one. So I'm happy to get that. Uh, this is from the guy that I bought the two Golden Age books. Uh, I don't know if it's a good price. He had it marked at 200 He said he would take 125 He gave me a really good price on it. It has a couple of little like creases right there. So I don't know if it's on. It's close to near me. It might be very fine plus. Uh, 125 I think was maybe a little bit higher than it's actually going for at the moment. But it's the first appearance of the Squirrel Girl, and the one I had is kind of beat up. So I was like, you know what, I really wanted one, and I figured 125 felt like a very comfortable price. So even if it's a little bit high, 
for the marketplace. Long run, I think it's still a great book to pick up. Oh, and then as we were walking out, I got a free little pack of stuff. This was, oh, wait, let me pull all this stuff out. Stickers and I think some Pokemon cards. Okay, I pulled out all the little feelies. So we have Fantastic Four, number seven variant edition. Uh, so these guys opened up a new shop recently, I believe. It says Nicholas, uh, that's their Instagram right there. It says nicholasbrooklyn.com with a phone number. So they're a new like toy and collectible shop that I want to go check out. That's their time and whatnot. Yeah, so I might, it looks like it's uptown possibly, I think. I'll have to check it out. But yeah, so they gave, they were giving these out to people. So you got a free comic book. We got a nice little Demon Slayer sticker. A fun little uh, Wonder Woman pop culture sticker. A little uh, Naruto sticker. And just some Pokemon commons. But it was really fun that they were giving away stuff promoting their shop. I think everyone walking out of the convention got a little pack from them. Super cool. Okay, that was a blast. I had so much fun at the con, and I just love showing you guys all the cool books I picked up. I'm going to put another mega epic comic haul right there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.